So Influence Air is um, inspired on what has been done in Stuttgart. They started two years ago in Stuttgart with the Open Knowledge Lab, uh, measuring air quality in Stuttgart, because it's a big issue there, um, especially the fine dust. Um, as a response to that, we saw it, we talked to them, we, we thought, hey, it would be very, very cool to do the same in Brussels. We had some volunteers, um, and then we thought, we could start measuring in Brussels, but why wouldn't the, why wouldn't we open up the project so that just everyone come come and join us uh, on a, on a biweekly basis? So that came out of uh, out of that idea came Civic Lab. So we meet actually every two weeks in, in our Civic Lab, and we are working on the project of Influence Air. Um, our goal is to uh, to raise awareness about air quality in Brussels by measuring and mapping um, local pollution levels, more specifically PM 2.5 and PM 10. And our goal is to build a comprehensive network of sensors all covering the whole Brussels region. Um, yes, hi, I'm Evelyn, also part of the Civic Labs Influence Air Group. Um, as um, Dries just mentioned, so it's actually based on the project which started in Stuttgart in Germany. It's called Luftaten. You can find information on luftaten.info. And uh, in, on their website, they actually describe how to assemble a low-cost particulate matter sensor uh, in the price range of about 30 euros. And um, based on the work that they did, so the instructions are given on their website to install this self-built PM sensor. And from the data that is transmitted, they provide or they generate continuous updated particulate matter maps um, around the globe. And so the project was very successful so far. And there are about 4,000 sensors active at this point worldwide. And of that, 60% in Europe, uh, giving about 2,300 sensors which are active in Europe itself. Um, so there are um, many citizens groups which also started in Belgium. In Antwerp, for example, Dust Cube, I think somebody's present here today. Uh, Leuven Air started in Leuven, that's Maarten, he will give a presentation later on. Um, Eco Fab Lab in Brugge, I think also somebody will be coming and giving the workshop this afternoon. And Influence Air, so our group in Brussels, giving at this point 110 active sensors in Belgium. And uh, a few more words on Influence Air by Dries. So to give you a better idea of who is behind the initiative, um, actually it's all volunteers and the advantage of making up or like making our project very open to the outside world is that we gather so many people who are interested in the topic and with different perspectives on the issue. Uh, we started some more from the technological point of view, but then as soon as it's getting bigger, we also have more civil servants, um, grassroots members, civil and civil um, entrepreneurial mindset people and researchers. So actually the advantage of, as it's called the, the quadru quadruple helix model of having different perspectives on the thing, that's what's really happening with uh, Influencer right now. Um, to give you an idea of the milestones, we started last year uh, with our civic lab and our meetings. Uh, from the community point of view, we actually uh, we were moving forward, going from 500 members now till 714 members who have participated at least in one of our um, meetups. And then from the technological point of view, our biggest breakthroughs were having our first sensors up and running. And then September, uh, as we are actually always, like we are doing and by doing, we are learning and improving the project. Um, we are always like looking for ways and how to improve our measurements and doing some analysis on our, our, our existing network. Um, and then in January 2018, we had actually uh, our first LoRa1 sensors uh, up and running. And LoRa1, if you have a sensor which is based on Wi-Fi, there is now the, the sensor based on LoRa1, which is actually a low, low distance, low energy. Uh, a uh, long-distance, long low-energy uh, network. Uh, our goal in Brussels is to, to have, uh, in, the, like in the coming months, 150 active sensors, 
which would actually cover, as you can see, different dots we, you have there, which would cover 100% of the Brussels region. And then our way of working, as I told you, it's the community-driven way of working. And by doing, we will do improvements on the sensor, on how can we improve it, how can we improve our measurements, and also constantly analyzing the data that is that are real-time sent to the data platform. Um, and there we see, on the one hand, it is important to, to show people on how to build their sensor themselves, but we also see, see the big potential of data, improving data literacy, that people are aware of data and know how to deal with data. And for that, we, are, we, analyze, we organized last week our first civic atelier, um, where we gathered 20 citizens uh, analyzing for one evening data and interpreting one evening data. Um, and then there is the point of having different backgrounds in the same room, which might sound like a difficulty, but there is a very nice methodology um, made by the School of Data. It's called the seven-step um, seven step methodology, which guides you through the whole data pipeline of defining your problem, finding the data, getting the data, verifying, cleaning, analyzing, and uh, presenting them. Another thing that we developed in our group is the website, the Influence Air Point BE. Um, so there we actually uh, describe how to assemble your sensor. We try to get people involved so that they can um, look when we have the meetup meetings every two weeks. Um, and also a nice feature which was recently implemented. So we have that same map as Luftdaten.info is, uh, is providing. And here we also have this, the, the sensor data, but also the data from the official uh, measurement stations uh, by Irseline. Uh, so they're visualized together so you can actually compare them a little bit. Um, some tools have been developed, so the, the workshop that Dries just described, uh, one of our members uh, provided some Python scripts which are able to analyze the, table, uh, the, the data, so you can uh, make some statistics, you can compare it sometimes to an official measurement station nearby. So this afternoon, the workshop, the, these tools will actually be uh, presented and you can use them. Um, and as Dries also mentioned, so the development that we did, so what we're using is an SDS-011 sensor, as Lufthaten Point Info, uh, the, the Lufthaten project does. Um, so what you need is actually, uh, you need to connect it to a cable, you need power supply, and you need Wi-Fi. And sometimes um, there are some difficulties with the Wi-Fi network, you need to have a continuous Wi-Fi network. Um, so one of the developments that was done is uh, the implementation of the LoRaWAN sensor. So instead of the Wi-Fi network, we use the LoRaWAN network, which is, um, uh, you can compare it actually to your Bluetooth network or uh, your 3G or 4G. Um, and in this sense, you would not need, need your Wi-Fi network. Um, and it's actually especially developed for these kind of sensors. So it's a low power wide area. Uh, network, so actually you'll be able to, um, you can communicate over long distances um, for devices which actually have a low data transfer rate, so it's ideal. So as you can see, they, we've developed it in a kind of a nice um, setup in a vogel cache, eh? a bird box, to also make it a little bit more appealing. This is also one of the things we would like to do. So at this point, the sensor is placed in these tubes and we would like to make it a bit more appealing so people would be able to install this more easily at their homes, outside their homes. Voila. All right. Then we already, already come to our last slide. Why we actually we are doing this project? And apart from the whole list of, um, of reasons being mentioned there, I think because we love to do it. <laughs> uh, we love working on a project that brings value to uh, for us as citizens and that um, has a, could have an impact in the longer term. Um, but then more specifically, because we want to raise awareness about the topic, um, about air quality and its health effects. Um, we also want to set an example of real-time open data publishing, so data that is 
opened up to everyone and that really can that everyone can use share and for whatever uh, purposes and we also want to have the an increase in the amount of local measurements right now there are already 11 official government stations and we want to have more local measurements so that we could have more insights on how it is different how it is yeah how it looks differently over the city um, then of, of course the power of different people with different backgrounds, different skills working together. Um, that sometimes brings some challenges in terms of managing the project, but it also in, brings a lot of value and it, yeah, in, by the end, good discussions. Um, and I think that's also the last reason, something that will be mentioned in our next presentation, is to bridge the gap between science and uh, a wider audience so that every, everyone can participate in this kind of project and that we no longer only can go to one web page and see the results, but that we can also just do it ourselves and see and feel how it looks like. Uh,